Hey there, everybody. I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast that I'm personally aware of that dares to ask the question, Hey, Jamie, what you watching? <laughs> um, and for good reason. I don't know how many people actually want to know the answer to that question. I, uh, But for those who do, mm-hmm. uh, I've been doing a lot of lately uh, rewatches and some old stuff. But I did actually find... Uh, I did actually do a couple of new things. And one of those, did you ever see the movie Outpost with, uh, it has Ray Stevenson and, um, oh. Is this the zombie Nazi bunker thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it for one of the summer series things. Okay. Yeah. uh, So I always liked that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I was at Second and Charles. We went there, I don't know, like a month back or something. And occasionally we'll just go there and peruse the used shelves just to see if there's anything that's missing. Most of the time, not. Uh, we pretty much have everything that that's there. And, it's, and we leave empty-handed and it's sad. <laughs> well, while we were there, uh-huh. I found a movie called Outpost Black Sun. Uh-huh. And I read the back and I'm like, is this a sequel to Outpost? And if it is, how have I never heard of it? But, and I showed it to Brian and he's like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like it'd be all that good. And I'm like, uh, I'm going to go for it, you know, because it was just a few bucks. I'm, gonna, I'm like, if it's bad, it's bad, but it could be a hidden gem. Mm-hmm. Well, turns out it was. I, Actually, it had a really good time with this movie. It is a continuation of the first film. And it goes into a lot of goofy territory territory at times. Not goofy bad, but um, like they kind he kind of, and it's the same guy who made it. Turns out he actually made a trilogy. And the third film is very hard to find, but I did find it on YouTube and we haven't watched it yet. But... Uh, like the third film is just available nowhere, but yeah. I, but it is on YouTube. So that's good. I do want to watch it, but it's <laughs> by the time it starts out um, very similar to the first one in a lot of ways. But then by the time you get to the end, it is just like balls to the wall. Like it is crazy pants, but I thought like in all the best ways, like I had such a good time with it and I am excited to actually see the trilogy because Brian didn't, love the second one but everything i've read about it people say that they prefer the third one over the second one even and so i'm like super excited um and it's it's the same idea and but rather than taking place in this bunker the whole film is some people trying to get to the bunker because they're trying to stop what the you know the machine that was created that uh, that causes these, you know, Nazi soldiers to come back or, or be here. Um, they're, so they're actually trying to trek to that during the war. Uh, so there's all this shit going on and uh, to destroy this machine and stop this from happening because the Nazi hordes are unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's the worst is, kind of Nazi horde. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, uh, it, it, it by the time you get to the end and you see the machine and how it works and what's going on and, and I don't want to spoil it because I really do think people should if you like the first one I I do recommend this one quite a bit because I just think it's a whole lot of fun but you get to the end and you're like whoa you know because the first one was very uh, I mean I want you know I want to say grounded even though we're talking about you know dead Nazi soldiers coming back to life yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. being <laughs> realistic killing yeah. Machines. Yeah. Um, but by the time you get to the end of this movie any bit of a groundedness is just out the window <laughs> and you're yeah. like whoa but it's fun I had such a good time with it so if you like the first one I I would say, uh, like I said, I don't know about the third one yet, but I think the second one is totally worth a watch. And I love the fact that this guy took this little movie and made a whole trilogy. Like, that just makes me happy. So, um, so yeah, that was fun. And it was, it, it was a totally, I had no idea it even existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just sort of fell into my lap. And that was, that was great. 
I feel like I have uh, like I haven't seen a lot of the uh, uh, Outpost movies. I've only seen the first one. I feel like hold on. I'm opening up my Plex as we're talking because I feel like I've got at least one or two of those. Um, Outpost, Rise of the Spetsnots. That's There's, the third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got it. Oh, wow. So I've got Outpost, Black Sun. I've got all three and I've only ever watched the first. So maybe oh, I'll do holy that. holy crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. So Rise of the Spetsnots. Uh... We discover the horrifying origins of these supernatural soldiers and see them in ferocious gladiatorial battle against the most ruthless and notorious of all military special forces, the yes. Russian Spetsnaz. So I wonder if it's like a Dead Snow 2 Red versus Dead kind of thing. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, you know, who knows? But uh, yeah, so I've got all three of these. I may I may fire those up. Uh, the Anyway. God bless my plex. Um, yeah, okay, so I got a movie, Jamie. And uh, I'm not going to bury the lead. I saw Renfield. Uh, I was supposed to go see that yesterday, and I uh, just didn't feel like leaving the house. <laughs> I No, so. I get it. I get it. I saw it yesterday. Like, here's my move, Jamie. Um, I don't know why I'm using your name. Like, <laughs> there are other people on the call. Um <laughs> I but, like it. It makes me feel important. Well, look, good. Uh, <laughs> because you are. And the so I, I'm one of those weirdos. Here's what I like. I got that uh, Regal Unlimited deal. So you can just go see a movie whenever. And yeah. I like an early morning movie. I like, yes. like I get up early. I do a handful of things. And then I'm like, you know, as a reward for waking up and doing some lesson planning and shit like that. I'm going to go be one of those weirdos that shows up to watch Renfield at 10 o'clock in the morning. I do that too. Yeah. I love it. And, uh, so that's what I did. I saw Renfield 10 o'clock in the morning. And, um, here's what I will say about Renfield. Nicholas Cage is incredible in it. He, his Dracula is so good. Um, mm -hmm. it is, it, it is very, there is an emotional depth, or not even emotional depth. It is a, a vampire who knows how to emotionally manipulate people. And and that's kind of the relationship that he has with Renfield is, is kind of suggested by the trailers of, you know, him being in this codependent group meeting. Right. But it, it really is Nicolas Cage, you know, turning the emotional screws on Renfield to keep him loyal. And, and it's this, like a metaphor for toxic relationships where, you know, Dracula will say things like, I'm the only one who loves you. There is nobody else that, you know, finds you to be important and necessary. So like your struggles to get free of me, why on earth would you do that when I'm the only person that cares about you? And it, it like that part of it is really, really good. Um, the other stuff around the movie, like the, the, uh, Nicholas Holt is good in it and it's gory in a way I didn't expect it to be, but it was really delighted by like, it's, it, you know, there's some CGI gore that I'm like, eh, this is not great, you know, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's the world we live in. I've um, seen a couple of gore clips that actually made me like laugh out loud in, in a good way. Like, yeah. you know, the bit where they're falling or like he's, I don't know if he jumps off of a uh, of a of a, a like a railing, but then grabs this guy as he's going down, and and then just blood just sprays everywhere. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my god! Like I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, right. I wish I wish that were a little more practical because the the CGI ness of it is very evident, uh. but it's 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 really gory, like unashamedly gory, which I appreciate. <laughs> You know, there are several moments where you see people just having their, you know, guts ripped out. Oh, yeah. And, and that's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I it's better than average, mostly because of how good Nicolas Cage is in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw an interview with him where he talked about sort of his inspiration for the character. Wait, or... was this the Stephen Colbert interview? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was going to tell you that I watched that and because he, he mentioned Mrs. Robinson from The Graduate, which 
that is so awesome <laughs> that it's, you would look to something like that. Yeah. And, and the Christopher Lee thing is really on display. Um, that's really fun. And it's good. Like he's very, very good in it. it. It's a nice reminder when when you forget that, like, oh, Nicolas Cage isn't just this campy actor. Nic- Nicolas Cage is a great actor. Mm-hmm. He just chooses to like. He just takes big swings. And... But he and I love that he does take it seriously. And he, I mean, even though he is doing some really goofy shit at times. He, you can tell that he takes the craft seriously and he is a huge movie fan just in general. Mm -hmm. And that comes across too. And, uh, I I just, I love that he's so thoughtful about his performances and you could look at something like Willie's Wonderland and be like, okay, but no, I mean, I guarantee you, he put thought into everything he did, (laughs) even, even with that role. Yeah. The, the, the thing, yeah, I, I totally agree. The, like. I don't know that I've ever seen Nicolas Cage phone in a performance. I may not have liked every performance I've seen him give, but he's never phoned it in. You know, uh, some of, some of those things I like more than others. Um, but you know, he, like I said, he takes big swings and I, I'm so much more interested in a performer that's taken big swings and misses than a performer that just is going to be, low key or checked out or you know whatever like i he's he's very good in this role and i really really i loved that if i didn't love the movie i loved him in the movie and um that that scene actually the the clip that they showed on colbert uh actually lets that scene where he comes into the uh the group therapy session breathe a little bit and that little waggle of the eyebrows he gives uh in that scene i think is just wonderfully funny um it's it like you know is it a great movie no but it's an interesting movie and i would much rather that than um you know like something that it feels just half baked like the people who made this movie cared and i don't know that it totally comes together i find the nicholas holt stuff a little one note i i found the aquafina subplot um a little one note as well and you know that stuff wasn't my favorite but it's you know every time nicholas cage is, is on screen i was absolutely delighted and I'll I'll take that, um, you know, a, a good Dracula performance. I, he mentioned the Langella Dracula in that interview, and mm-hmm. there's a hint of that. And I was like, oh, any time that you can, you know, bring in a little Frank Langella Dracula, I'm a I'm a happy <sighs> guy. That is one of my favorite Draculas ever. I love him so much in that movie. Brian always makes fun of me because I'm just, he's just like, oh, Lord. And I'm like, no, I yeah. love him. I love him so much. <laughs> it, it's one of the like sexier yes. performances of Dracula. And, and which that's why it's kind of frustrating that nobody pays attention to it that much it's like no 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 this is like low-key one of the best draculas even though the movie itself is imperfect let's say yeah um but the the dracula performance is terrific and what i love is that you look at frank jella frank jella frank langella in Uh later roles more more recent roles and you i you'd be hard pressed to convince me that's the same guy (laughs) yeah if I didn't know it, you know, like it's just, oh, I, I, I love, I love it so much. One, of, so much. <laughs> one of my favorite things is, uh, speaking of uh, Frank Jella, which if he dated himself, that would be his dating name. Um, <laughs> it like the movie Dave, where he he plays a completely different kind of character, but just as evil, where he's, uh, you know, manipulating Kevin Klein into. Yeah pretending to be the president and all but w- there's that moment where he says i'm gonna kill him and i can't remember who the other actor is but he says you can't kill him and he, uh he says sure i can he's just a normal person i can kill a normal person and i love that sentiment of like oh yeah like he's not he's not one of the elite like us 
so I can just kill him all willy nilly like. Uh, but he's great. He like I love him as a villain. Uh, even in that stupid Masters of the Universe movie, which is not good. Um, oh, but, I always forget he did that. Yeah, but he's he's great <laughs> in it. You know, no, he, he is. He, he is. It, it's sort of like when Raul Julia showed up in that yes, Street Fighter uh, movie. Street Fighter, yeah. Where it's like this movie is not good, but good Lord in heaven. Langella is giving it his all. And... I think he did it for the same reason that uh, Raul Julia did. I feel, I want to say that I've heard him say that he took that role because his kids were fans of the, of He-Man. And that's why he did it. Whereas like Raul Julia only did it because his kids are big Street Fighter fans and they begged him to. So, yeah. um, <laughs> which yeah, I, I mean great when you can get really great actors to do things that you wouldn't expect really great actors to do and it's they have their own personal reasons for getting on board with it yeah i it, it wasn't that long ago that i saw that street fighter movie and um man uh, uh rail julia is so good in that there he has that great line like again the movie is garbage it's, it's a terrible movie but uh, there's that scene where the the woman um, is it Cammy in the movie anyway, yeah, yeah. where where she talks about how like Raul Julia, when he was younger, like came to uh, her village and destroyed it and killed her father, and she has been on this quest for vengeance ever since. And he says, um, "For you, that day was the day that changed your life forever, and when the day that Bison graced your village." was the most important day of your life for me for me it was it tuesday, was a tuesday. <laughs> yeah it's so good <laughs> damn that's good uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but again it's a garbage movie but it's almost worth it for a moment like that it is it's so fun um Anyway, all right, but that's Renfield. Uh, you know, it, if you can see it at a matinee, that's where I'd recommend it. I would definitely say watch it if you're if you're a fan of of Dracula films. Um, then it's it, like Nicolas Cage is is genuinely one of the great Dracula performances. I highly highly recommend it for on that Yay. level. Um, the rest of it, eh, it's fine. Um, but that and the gore, some of the gore is very fun, and, they, and like I laughed several times. It's it it has its moments. I'm. I don't want to take anything away from it, but also, you know, let's let's be real. The real, the real winner in all of this is, uh, um, is is Cage. Who, good lord, man, he is so good in it. Anyway, uh, what else you been watching? Okay, this is going to make you happy. Oh, so for our show that's about to come out, um, we in season three we kind of we have abandoned the alphabet thing because we were we kept running into letters that we have no more choices for <laughs> so, right your, your x's and y's and z or x's yeah. and z's in particular are probably pretty tough yes yeah. so we're like well shit what do we do now so what we decided to do and season three is called bust and loose it is the son of the abcs of hidden horror and mm -hmm. as you know teenage boys are kind of hard to deal with they do whatever they want mm -hmm. so um we are for every episode, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. That snuck up on me. This cannot for be every, allowed to stand. Go ahead. <laughs> for every episode, we take turns just throwing out a theme. Uh, like uh, for St. Patrick's Day, uh, my the theme I put out was um, uh, was Irish films. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I didn't have to think too far out of the box for that, but. Uh, so this one was Brian's choice, and he chose chainsaws. Mm. Well, um, I chose pieces, which irritated him because that's a movie he was going to pick. But the rule is that whoever, whoever, whose turn it is to pick the theme, the other person gets first choice. And we kind of spring it on each other in the show. So you just have to you know you think about it right then and so i was like pieces and he's just like god damn it i just knew you were gonna go uh you know basic bitch and go texas chainsaw and i'm like well one no that's uh, you know I, I would never do that but also we just did a texas chainsaw retro for patreon so mm -hmm. um so i chose pieces so he then to be a smart ass chose evil dead 2 oh sure sure you're one and, of your favorite movies yeah uh, exactly I... but 
I have to say, I watched it and this is the highest score I've ever given it. I enjoyed it more than I ever have. And I actually like the movie. What, what changed? What, what do you think happened? I don't know. I have no idea. I, maybe it was that I was, um, like really paying attention. What won me over was a lot of Sam Raimi's choices as far as shots. Mm -hmm. Like there are some really good looking shots in that film Mm -hmm. and just his filming, his film style is part of the reason that I got won over. I'm still not a big fan of the recap in the beginning. I, um, kind of funny we watched a react where there's a couple reaction channels that we watch and there's Mm -hmm. one that we watched last night and they were reacting to evil dead 2 and they had just recently done evil dead 1 and they were so confused (laughs) going into the movie they were just like wait what wait who is this wait what's happening where's everybody else like they were so confused and so and i told brian i'm like see like that's it just if they had just picked it up where the last one ended, I would have been fine with that. And he's like, yeah, but then, you know, back in the eighties and I'm like, by the 18, 19, 18, 1987, you didn't have to do that. Like there yeah. people had the ability to watch the first film before going into the second one. And I'm like, I just, that still bothers me. I just, and I understand why they did it. And I understand that it was just, it was, it's a very brief portion of the film. Like you don't, you only spend a few minutes in that flashback time and then you you know continue to move forward so what i was able to do was just in my head chop off that beginning Mm -hmm. (laughs) replace it with the first film in my head Mm -hmm. and then uh keep going from the moment that it you know rushes out to him in in the cabin and he ends up in the water face down you know all demony and so because i like made a, a concerted effort to do that then I was a little bit more forgiving of that part. Uh, another thing I never really cared about was the, I don't really care for the character, the new characters that were brought in, but I did, uh, what I was able to do with that is I was able to just enjoy the gore that was going on. And I do, I've always liked Henrietta. I always thought that was kind of cool. So sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I just, you know, I was a little more forgiving with it and, and like allowed myself to just re- like kind of relax and get into it and not be so picky about the fact that it goes. And my biggest main issue with it has always been the tones, the tonal switch between the first one and the second one. And it just was so jarring to me because I have always found evil, the, the evil dead to be uh, like legitimately scary and that that it felt like that's what he was trying to do. And even though the budget is limited, I felt like he was successful. And then in the second one, it just is crazy pants, just balls to the wall. And I, I didn't like that because I enjoy the f- scariness of the first one. And so I was always irritated that it was so much more comical, but I still don't like that, but I was much more acceptable to it this time. So I ended up, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did actually enjoy it. And um, same week, we watched Night of the Demons, same thing. I mean, so maybe I'm, because I've never, I've always liked the beginning and the end of that movie, but the middle of it always lost me. Mm-hmm. And um, this time, I was able to just kind of sail through and enjoy it more than I ever have before. So I don't know, maybe it's just that I'm getting older. I don't know. I mean, maybe my sensibilities are changing or I'm uh, just not taking things so to heart. I I don't know what it is, but I have found myself going back. And I even told him, I'm like, I think I'm ready to watch Aliens again. (laughs) (laughs) I I like that it's like this dramatic moment of like like sitting down at the kitchen table. I need to talk to you about something. (laughs) I know this... We, we've we've been through a lot together <laughs> this you know the, i i think finally <laughs> it's time for aliens yeah and, but i did t- i did tell him as long as it's not the director's cut <laughs> but, i you know i uh, prefer the uh, do i prefer it i like the director's cut i don't know that i i prefer it but i like it 
there are things I do like. I like the fact that they, I like the whole daughter thing, you know, that we find out that she had a daughter and, and her daughter now has died, mm -hmm. you know, because she's been away for so long. And that's a nice heartbreaking little moment that kind of gives you, uh, gives that character a little more pathos, not that she really needed <laughs> anymore after what she'd been through, but it, I do like that, but I just feel like overall the director's cut is very self-indulgent and I'm not a huge Cameron fan. So mm. that kind of, I'm very, I'm very, there are like three films of his that I really love and then everything else, I just don't care. So, um, uh, yeah, but I am ready. I think, I, I think that I'm at a point where I, I want to watch it again, reappraise it. And I think I could probably land on a more positive side. You know, I also don't like Newt. I, I just don't like that character. So, <laughs> um, that is the grace yeah. I have come to with age is that I, I, I started off not liking Newt at all. And now I'm like, ah, Newt's fine. It's not great. Uh, she is not a great character, but, I get it, and I like more than it, more than anything. I just understand the purpose she serves in the movie, and I can appreciate more like Newt in theory than in practice. You know what I mean? Well, that is one instance in which I think that that bit in the director's cut actually helps because you knowing that, <coughs> God damn it, <coughs> knowing that about Ripley, kind of, uh, it it give it makes it more meaningful mm -hmm. that she has taken newt under her wing and you know it's, it's kind of sworn to protect her it also makes it that much more sad that when you get to the third film you find out that you know she died off screen but um, that yeah that that's one of those real like bullshit moments of like what do you died off screen what in the <laughs> like that like the, the surrogate child was critical you know in a lot of ways like that's that was the the heart of her character in aliens and all of a sudden it's like you know uh she fucking died don't worry about it i know it's horrible yeah it's it's real dumb but here's the thing i i actually like alien 3 <laughs> like i i, I do, yeah i know? like it more than i think a lot of people do <laughs> but uh, but it's it's real messy. But I see like the the fincherness of it. Um. Yes. And and I like that. I I like the fact that there is this like, you know, <laughs> almost a fincherian element. But uh, but you know that that it's got um, uh, th there there's a a style to it. It it feels like its own thing. Yeah. Um yeah. and and much like aliens, like I I think that's the the upside of aliens is that it feels like it it does not feel like alien. It you know, it feels like you're trying to do something different with it. And it, w however successful that is, you know, you can you can debate, but it's not just a rehash of alien. And that's true. And I, you know, I can appreciate that. My issue with that one has always been kind of similar to my issue with Evil Dead. And that is just that the first one was so uh, just, it, it, it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. It is legitimately scary and it's so well done and very simple. You know, it's just the one location and one creature and these, all these people trying to survive. And I... I love that about it. Mm -hmm. And then with the second one, it's so action heavy and just not scary at all. I don't, I just have never found uh, it yeah, scary. A absolutely. Not. Like it is a sci-fi action movie, not a horror movie. Yeah. And, and that, I, you know, yeah. to me was jarring because I love the first one so much. So mm -hmm. it's very similar. It's just that in very similar to evil Dead, in that it just was the tonal shift from a film that I absolutely adore and think that it's legitimately scary, and this is in both cases, to the sequel being not at all scary, going in a very different direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's kind of like if you read a book by a favorite author, and they've branched out and done something totally different, and you're like, uh... <laughs> like right, this right, is, right. You know, um, but, I, like I said, I, I think maybe it's just that I'm getting... Maybe it is just that I'm getting older, you know, and I'm 
just at a point where I'm reappraising things, you know, so I'm actually excited to watch aliens again. Cause the last time I watched it was several years ago and, uh, I just still didn't like it, but I, I don't know. I feel like I could right now. So I'm going to do that coming up. <laughs> I I'm so pleased at this idea of like, I think, I think I can do it. <laughs> I, I think the time has come. Uh, like, I've never wanted to be that person that, hey, I don't, I don't, I've never, I don't know. I've never liked the fact that I didn't like those movies that everybody else, every single other person in the horror community is enamored of. I, you know, I'm not trying to be cool or hip or different. I, I, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to like them. I just have never been able to. And so now I'm finding that I can, I'm, I want to tear through. I want to see what else that I not like and what else might I like now? Because my ultimate goal is to love everything. You, know, you have I, never sounded older. <laughs> than when I said hip. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it as soon as it left my mouth. I was like, Oh my God, I sound so old right now. Daddy, daddy's hip. Daddy's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the whole vibe of that which i adore um uh, okay well now that i've aged myself uh what's your next movie all right i'm gonna do like a, a quick threefer here um but i rewatched. uh speaking of reevaluating i rewatched all those new planet of the apes movies uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of yeah. the Planet of the Apes, War for the Planet of the Apes. And I watched them in like two days. I was just like, you know what? It's been a while since I, I visited these and I remember liking them. And uh, so why not? And so I did. And I got to say, um, I really, I, I enjoy all of them. Um, that second one though, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, that's a terrific movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite of all of them. Yeah, like R- Rise is good, uh, and it, it certainly has you know pathos and everything. Like you know, it, you will. It makes me cry though, so you know. Yeah, I all the stuff and yeah, <laughs> all, all that stuff in like the primate habitat and whatnot with Brian Cox just rolling through and being like, "Just put the monkeys wherever," and you know, being a real dick to to all the monkeys. Um, you know, look, I I love monkeys. I don't, I don't want them harmed. And, uh, so yeah, that stuff is, is very emotional. And, um, then, you know, like uh, that movie is fine and I like how it ends. And, you know, like one of those movies where the CGI tends to work in, in the movie's favor, mostly, um, it's not always superb, but, but generally pretty good at night, mostly. The monkeys make you cry mostly, <laughs> and so I. But I liked it, and then uh, watching Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I was like, "Holy fuck! This movie is tremendous! Like it's Shakespearean uh, in a way that the first one is not. The first one's like a pretty good, you know, sci-fi action kind of movie, and um." Like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is this like Shakespearean tale of fathers and sons and yeah, loyalty yeah. And, and that kind of thing. It was like, motherfucker, this movie's good. Um and I and I think war is 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 good. Um I think they're all good. War is fine. Um, but coming off of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, it's sort of like Godfather Two to Godfather Three. Where you're like Godfather Three is a fine movie if Godfather and Godfather Two did not exist. Yes, and unfortunately they do. And unfortunately, War for the Planet of the Apes comes on the heels of Dawn of Planet of the Apes, and it just cannot live up to the glory of of that movie. I think it's good, um, but and, and I think the Woody Harrelson stuff, and, and there is like some real tragedy in this. Like, oh, here's this disease that's going to make all the human beings stupid. And I like that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, at a certain point, you're like, well, you know, I I appreciate I appreciate this movie uh, for it being a good conclusion to the trilogy. And I think it serves that function very well. Mm -hmm. But, man. 
You know, one of my favorite characters in that series is Kobo. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, his arc and his just, his, I don't know, he makes me so sad. Like, just everything about him. And even, even when he becomes, uh, like rage filled and, you know, just, yeah. I mean, I, it, it's like, I, I get it, you know, and I just, I feel bad for him. Like, I, I don't know. I really, I really like, I, I really, really like what they did with the characters. I mean, you could have easily have written off these movies as a special effects extravaganza. And, you know, the story could have been meh, you know, mm-hmm. but they didn't. They, they didn't. And especially in the second one, I feel like they put so much into the writing and development of these characters that it, it is way better than you would ever think it should be. But, you know, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely a, a, a feeling of th- this is better than it almost has any right to be. Um, but, yeah, it's yeah, it's a real good movie. Uh, or the you know as a trilogy, it's one of the better movie trilogies of the past. What? Yeah, for know, sure. Several years for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's quite good. Um, what about you? What else have uh, have you been watching here? Uh, okay, so I kind of threw out a a, com- a comparison to Dead Snow Two earlier, just kind of off the cuff. And we recently for the collection we are in the d's still mm-hmm. uh, and we uh, recently watched dead snow and dead snow 2 dead snow 2 being a film that i have not seen since it came out i only watched it the one time and i haven't watched it again and it's not that i didn't like it i liked it i just haven't but i remembered not liking it as much as the first one but holy shit on this second watch I have to say, I was just blown away. It is so, there are so many great, gory moments. It's gory as hell. Mm. There are so many just, they this Herzog blows up a pram with a tank. Mm. And, and the baby, actually two of them, and the babies just go flying. And, you know, and it's fucking hilarious. There's another scene where three kids are playing in a sandbox tank, just rolls right over. Them. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, and I just forgot how nuts it was, and I absolutely adore that film now. And that, like I said, I never didn't like it. I just my memory of it was that it wasn't as good as the first one. Well, then, so what that did was um, for the bump segment on the show that's about to come out, we actually did a director spotlight of of Tommy Wirkola, mm-hmm. and it's just this guy. He has he has flown under the radar as far as he doesn't get mentioned in the same breath with directors like Flanagan or anything like that. But honestly, I've seen five of his films. A couple the only ones I haven't seen are the are his like early Norwegian films, and they're kind of hard to find. But of all the films that I've had access to. Uh, which include uh, Dead Snow, Dead Snow 2, The Trip, um, Violent Night, of course, Mm -hmm. and um, uh, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. I love them all. Like, I I just, this guy is fucking solid. And nobody ever talks about him. So we decided we were going to highlight him in a discussion, and that was really fun. But, yeah, the the takeaway from that is that... uh, is that watching those movies again, I was just like, God damn it. I know Dead Snow is, is one that I've seen a lot. Like I've seen that movie a lot. I, I absolutely love Dead Snow. But now Dead Snow 2 uh, is right up there. And I am so excited. He has two movies in post-production right now. Um, one is called Spermageddon. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what the other one is called. But apparently he did in... Um, as an as before he got like i think his first feature length film was kill bullyo um the movie which is appears to be his take on kill bill like the poster is even the same uh, or very similar and this it's all about revenge 
and I've got to find this movie. I, I, I need to find this movie. And I, uh, I just, I love this guy, you know, and now with Violent Night doing as well as it did, I really feel like, and he already had the one crossover film with Hansel and Gretel that, that got a theatrical release. But I really feel like since Violent Night did as well as it did, that uh, he's probably going to be hopefully handed more things I just hope that he keeps his uh, his love of violence <laughs> because mm -hmm. um, he clearly has a love of violence and crazy ass gore, and I am on board. So that was that was really fun watching that again. Maybe you just have found uh, like a love of movies that are sequels. Like ju <laughs> you, you just like part twos now. <laughs> Uh, maybe you've, you've turned a corner and now part two so just can't get enough of them <laughs> give me more well you know what that's funny because yeah the outpost was a part two mm -hmm. evil dead two uh I, dead snow too and, like uh, there's a theme dead here too and i talked about wanting to watch aliens again so yeah yeah, yeah you're right yeah oh and then D dawn is my favorite planet of the apes so well that's not just... a halt not yeah. of all time. The original Planet of the Apes is always going to be my favorite Planet of the Apes because I just love the shit out of that movie. <laughs> yeah, like the, yes, I agree. I agree. That that is a movie that has fallen victim. I think to everybody kind of knows the the ending of it, and and so people are like, oh yeah, yeah, the you know you blew it all up, you know. Um, but it's like yeah, but everything else about that movie is incredible too. You know, oh, yeah. that yeah. I, right. Like the, the, you blew it all up is significant, but the, the all the other you stuff get to that point. Right. Right. And so that it has an impact. You yeah. Know? And, and the uh, getting to it is phenomenal. Yeah. You know, when you were a kid, did those movies come on TV a lot? Oh like yeah, on yeah, yeah. Saturdays or, I mean, I remember being a little, little kid watching all day long watching planet of the apes movies because mm -hmm. they would, they would just play the, all, all of them in a row. And I did that every time they came on, I was just like, Oh, I got it. Like I've always just been so in love with that. series. even when it gets kind of goofy, mm -hmm. you know, when they're, you know, go to the, they end up in the city and present day, like the, you know, the, when the apes come to the human earth and I, I just, or human timeline. Yeah. Um, yeah. I even like that part, but the original is just so incredible. And as much as I am not a huge fan of, well, okay. I'm not a fan at all of Charlton Heston's politics. Uh, I gotta say like he really <coughs> between, I'm so sorry. I think I'm having like allergies or something and something's tickling my throat, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like with, Planet of the Apes and uh, Soylent Green mm -hmm. and uh, Omega Man. Like, I just love all of those movies. And so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know why I got off on that. Why am I yeah, I mean, but <laughs> no, no, no. You're, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, all of those movies are great. And, right. I, I Even his... though with Omega Man, I still want to say, just make the book. Why can't we just make the right, book? Well, I still yeah. really enjoy that movie. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's... It, Right, like you forget how good Charlton Heston is at you know being just a, a an honest to goodness movie star. Um, and, and, like there is that scene at the beginning of Planet of the Apes, and I've got the the box set that's got like all the original movies and then the the new trilogy on in four K. Oh, we have that too. Yeah, it's a a great collection, and um, but they're in the the original movie. There's that moment where I, I might screw this line up, but it's it's when they crash land after they crash land and all the other astronauts are still alive, and he's talking uh, to one of them about like everything you ever knew is dead now. Everybody that you ever loved is gone. Every even their children are dead now. How's it taste? And that how's it taste is one of the most like asshole things. I have ever heard the hero of a movie say to another character, it is wonderful. Well, uh, he is a bit of an asshole. In that movie. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. Like, but I like it. You know, I like that because that, that's real. You know, people are assholes. Yeah, and it, it's but also heroes. 
<laughs> it yeah, it, it's crazy that that movie, um, like your hero of the film, the film that or the 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 person that you're following through that movie is kind of a jerk. You know, like Taylor is a bit of a dick through most of that movie. Um, yeah, and but but also is you know incredible, uh, an incredible performance. Um, uh, but yeah, all right, so. Uh, Dead Snow 2. Oh, I know what I want to talk about real quick. Um, speaking of reevaluating, I watched the unrated extended director's cut, whatever you want to call it, of World War Z. Uh huh. And, um, I did not like that more than oh. the first time I saw <laughs> it. I thought you were going to give me another one that I could reappraise because I've only seen that one once. I saw it in the theater and I haven't seen it since. Here's the thing. Because I didn't like it. (laughs) Right, right. The first, like, 30, 45 minutes of it is totally fine. You know? And by totally fine, I mean pretty good. Um, Like, the the initial zombie stuff. Like, it's very different from the book. And that's a problem because the book is so damn good. Yes. And and there's part of you that is forever going to ask the... It's that I am legend question of, like, why did you just not make... Make the book. Right. The the (laughs) book is great. There's a reason that people have been making it for 30 years. Just make the book. Um, But World War Z, I still say that one of these days they're going to do a, like... HBO extended series and it's going to be incredible. Um, that is not this, but the, the fact that they've done like, this is the fast zombies there, you know, the threat is that there are so many of them and that they're unrelenting and all of that. Um, I don't, I didn't mind that part of it as much. I'd started to get cool with the idea that, this is this ain't your daddy's world war z and so for the first few minutes uh and by first few like the first 30 45 minutes i was like maybe i do like this movie and i i just needed that space to allow myself to like it a little bit and uh and not judge it against the book uh solely but then the movie takes that turn where it just becomes this kind of like, hey, we're going to go from this place to this place uh, to try to, you know, solve the mystery of where the zombies came from and how can we find a cure. And it it just becomes less interesting. It, it just repeats itself to a point that I, I stop caring. And also the CGI, you know, it, the... <laughs> The same thing that we always say, like CGI just does not age terribly well because it, it's in a constant state of improving. And because of that, it's difficult to, you know, really give it a, a fair day in court because it's just constantly, you know, like when you look at the CGI of World War Z now, it's just not as good as the CGI of, you know, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or whatever, you know, Um so, you know, it, it, the zombies become less scary because they're just too cartoonish at, at, in a certain way. And it, it was just a bummer. It was a reminder that, like, yeah, I was probably right about this movie. That it's not it's not great. It's not, you know, it ain't the worst movie I've ever seen. But, boy, is it a disappointment because the source material is so good. And in exploring the history of it a little bit, like, there was a problem with that movie and in, you know, even as they were making it, like that was a movie that they were rewriting as they were shooting. And, you know, it's the old story of you, it, it's difficult to, uh, you know, build a plane while you're flying it kind of thing. And yeah, it's just, uh, that, that's a real disappointment of a movie and, and continues to be so, um, so, I, but I was in the mood for like a, a zombie movie that wasn't, you know, made for 30 bucks in somebody's backyard. And those, those are hard to come by these days, uh, unless you just want to go watch Walking Dead, which I did not want to do. Because <laughs> that, that's its own set of problems. 
well shit i was actually considering recently watching that movie again and um yeah, I, don't know, I, maybe I, <laughs> I think it, I think if you stop it at the point where they're gonna go to Israel, I think that's where the movie loses its way. Because up till then, it's like okay, we've got to get to uh, I forgot the the first place they go, but anyway, that's the scene with David Morse as the CIA agent talking about how North Korea, uh, South Korea is where they go first, uh, how North Korea solved their problem by. Um, basically um, plucking out the teeth of every man, woman, and child in North Korea. And and so you kind of defang the zombies in that way. And it, it was such a North Korean thing to do. Right, but it was kind of an interesting idea. And like, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't remember exactly the way that David Morse phrases it, but it's something like, you know, it was the biggest, like, social engineering project the earth has ever seen and it worked and 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 like it was an interesting moment in the movie and then they go to jerusalem and that's just the point where it's like everything's fine here oh shit zombies well let's go this other place oh everything's fine here oh shit zombies and it just it becomes less interesting of a of, of a film after that but um you know the the front 30 45 minutes pretty good just uh just not not so good after that i just i don't think i can get past the cgi hordes it just bothers me so much because it looks so unnatural yeah it's not great it's not great um a lot of that stuff especially when you get to those jerusalem scenes i i think that's when in particular it starts to look real bad yeah 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 uh what else you got we got time for a couple more here Man, I've watched so many good things lately. I, I seriously, like last Friday, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. So I got up and decided to just watch a couple movies. And I watched the original Invasion of the Body Snatcher. Mm. And then followed that with my cousin Vinny. I don't know why, but it just kind of popped up on HBO. And I was like, all right, I'll watch that. I haven't seen it in a while. And then last night I watched Fright Night mm. um, just because. Uh, so, I mean, I've, I've had like a lot of good stuff, but I'm not going to talk about those. Oh, um <laughs> I'm going to talk about this movie that um, is coming out on Arrow. Uh, Arrow was doing a release of it, and it's a slasher from 1999 called Lover's Lane that I had never seen nor heard of. Mm -hmm. And it's not very good, but (laughs) all right, the thing is, um, it has some interesting ideas. Like it, it, it almost crested the hill. Like it tried but it just kept rolling back down and the idea is that there was a murder on lover's lane and there's a little girl who is the sheriff's daughter and the sheriff shows up on scene with her in the car i don't know why but she's there and it turns out that one of the people that got killed was her mother and so because of that um and her mother and the guy that she was with. And so because of that, you know, he goes the rest of his life thinking his wife was having an affair on him and all of that. And then it picks up 13 years later to where the girl is in high school and she has her group of friends and they decide that they're going to go hang out on lover's lane and they get, um, the, the killer at the same time has escaped from, the mental institution where he's been all this time. And so it's just, it's, you know, the escaped guy with a hook for a, he Mm -hmm. legitimately has a hook for a hand. And uh, at one point even hooks it through the car door handle. And uh, you're like, Oh, they're going to get home. And then, you know, but they don't do that. But he, but you can tell they're playing with that idea. The problem. And, and there are actually, like I said, some really kind of fun moments about it. And in the beginning, I was like, all right, yeah, I might, I might can get on board with this. Also, Anna Ferris, her first movie. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And she's playing uh, just a cheerleader, <laughs> you know, but <clears throat> she is one of the main core of friends. The problem with it is that they don't do like she is a character who's new in town. So she doesn't really know anyone and they make a point of telling you that. And then it means nothing. They don't do, it doesn't matter. Like there's, 
you didn't need to know that because that's all you know about her character. And then it, that's kind of all there is. And I'm like, what? Like, and it just, at, at times it is very nonsensical. And then you get to the, and they make some really bizarre choices as characters. And then you get to the very end and the resolution is you're like fucking what? <laughs> right. 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 But this is the best thing is that this killer you have been shown multiple times like through the whole movie that his right hand is replaced by a hook and then at the end they do that whole thing where oh you know is he dead and they're i'm not really spoiling anything because it, it oddly him being the killer isn't the complete resolution there's a lot more to it than that so if you do want to watch it i'm not really ruining anything here but you get to the end and he's like uh they do with that scene where the kid, <clears throat> where any survivors are being taken away from the scene, you know, the morning after scene that we mm-hmm. see at the end of a lot of movies. And then they, you know, often will do the sting where, oh, the killer is still alive, you know, like Kiefer Sutherland in phone book, uh, phone booth or something. And so you've got a person that you don't see in the driver's seat of this car that they put somebody in and they pour out a cup of coffee with a regular hand and it's their left hand. And then they go and they put the coffee cup back in the car. And you're just looking at this from the outside of the car. So you don't see the person. All you see is the hand sticking out the door. They pour out the coffee. Then, you know, their hand goes back inside. And then a hook (laughs) comes and closes the car door. And I'm like, so it's supposed to be like, oh, you know, killer's still alive. And I'm like, but wait, what one? We just saw his real hand. And two, we know for a fact his right hand is the one that has the hook. So what just happened? (laughs) Right, right, right. And it's clearly his left hand that's closing the car door. Because what kind of, what psycho would reach across themselves and lean out to close a car door with your right hand? Unless you just didn't have a left hand. But he did. His left hand is the good one. So I'm like, so clearly that was just for the audience. And it makes no sense at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, th- this is so we can have another movie, but it doesn't make any sense. Do you want another movie or not? No. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I know what you're saying. And then the answer to that is no, we don't want another one because it's just not good. And it, But it's one of those that is kind of frustrating because it was a nine, it was from 99, which of course is post-Scream, but it had nudity. It had like all the things that you would expect from a more traditional 80s slasher, they weren't necessarily tripping over themselves and falling into those 90s slasher things, Mm -hmm. tropes, you know. And it had some kernels of good ideas, but it got way too convoluted, way too... There's just so much stuff going on at the end, and it's filmed poorly, so it's dark. Yeah, and that's always good. That doesn't, that doesn't make it any easier. Yeah. But when you get to the resolution, you're just like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's real frustrating. It's, it's 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 just, it's a fail. And it kind of makes me sad because I feel like they could have done something good. But there's a reason that I've never heard about this movie. But if for anybody who is a slasher completist and really, you know, wants to check it out, it will be coming out on Arrow. I'm not sure when, but um, we got a review disc for it. But um, And Lover's Lane is the name of this? I don't think I've yeah. ever seen it either. No, I, I, I didn't have a clue. And so I don't know if maybe it was direct to video. Oh, well, it clearly was direct to video <laughs> when it came out. But it's just one of those frustrating movies where you're like, you know, you you could have done something really good here. And yet they just kept stepping on rakes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, all right. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're almost up on our hour, but I, I feel like I'm a therapist. Your hour is almost up. Um, but I want to mention one movie uh, that we like before we recorded, we were talking about uh, my, my, you know, travails, uh, as a freshman English teacher. And, um, recently I went back and watched the movie teachers. Okay. Uh, do you know this movie? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. 
So it's it, from the like mid '80s. It's like '83, '84. Um, directed by Arthur Hiller, and it stars Nick Nolte and Joe Beth Williams and Judd Hirsch and Chris McGlover and Ralph Macchio. It's like uh, Laura Dern, one of her early performances. It's kind of a murderer's row of of really good like character actors. And um, I hadn't seen it in forever, and I was kind of in the mood to watch something that was like legitimately a good uh reflection of like w- uh, of, of what what it's really like to be a teacher because like every the the go-to for almost everyone is like dead poet society which right. is not really much of a representation of actual teaching you know like it's a, a very glamorized look at it and uh, so I, you know, I wanted to do something that was uh, a little more realistic, as I recalled it. And and sure enough, when I watched it, I was like, oh yeah, this is very much, um, a- at least more accurate, not necessarily accurate, but more accurate than uh, what is is typically seen in movies, in the sense that it is, um, you know, dealing with, uh you know, uh, like the difficulties of, of students that, you know, don't seem to care and, and that kind of thing. And, and a teacher that's kind of burned out by it, you know, that's kind of Nolte's character in the movie is this guy who is like, I don't know if it's worth it anymore. And I'm certainly not, you know, not in that boat. I, I haven't been teaching that long to be that frustrated by it, but it is kind of fascinating. Um, to to see even back in the early 80s, you know, 40 years ago now, that a lot of that stuff was, you know, I mean, absolutely part of the conversation about education even then. You know, a big part of the uh, the movie is a lawsuit going on because this kid graduates and can't read. And so, you know, his, his parents are suing the school for graduating him without the ability to, you know, just basic literacy. And Nick Nolte at one point is like, this isn't about this kid or about his ability to read. This is somebody just trying to make a buck, you know, that's not what the, the, the point of this is. But it was like, you know, as a movie, it kind of has its flaws, but it, it's shockingly good for it being a 40 year old look at education. Like a lot of the stuff hasn't changed that much. Um, and also the guy who plays, uh, Dr. Chilton from silence of the lambs mm-hmm. plays the narcotics officer that's undercover in the school. And I, I can't think of his name now, Anthony something, I think, but anyway, there's a great moment where Ralph Macchio, who is doing this like, uh, a photographic essay, about what's wrong with the school at one point is taking a picture of him and Crispin Glover is behind him holding up a sign uh, with an arrow pointing to him that just says narc. That's quite funny. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it, it was nice to go back to it because I wanted something that was a little bit more, uh, uh, I, I hesitate to say cynical, a little more realistic than, you know, dead poet society or dangerous minds or something like that, where, it you know it is sort of this glamorized view of teaching as opposed to um you know the kind of shit you actually see well yeah yeah um yeah and even though i love those movies you're absolutely right uh like dead poet society is uh, is an all-time favorite of mine sure um, yeah 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 absolutely <clears throat> and i love dangerous minds too but it's yeah they're not <laughs> they're not exactly uh I, I like a good litmus test for what it's like to be a teacher you know, one of my favorite teachers in film is William Hurt in Children of a Lesser God. Mm, I yeah, I I really love his performance in that film, and a lot of it has to deal with his you know relationship with Marley Matlin and all that. But there there are those bits where he is genuinely trying to teach these children, and he keeps getting hamstrung by the administration who don't like his methods and don't think that, you know, they're, it's worth 
doing. But then, you know, of course, it turns out that he because he has alternative methods for teaching deaf children mm -hmm. to speak. And it turns out it actually does work. And I just he's always been one of my favorite cinematic teachers because I think he he is a teacher who wants to go outside the box and wants to genuinely help these kids. And you can feel it come across from William Hurt. Like I, I feel that from him. So I always like that. I always, I don't know what it is, but I really like movies about teachers in schools. Um, mm -hmm. Like even something like class of 1984. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I've always been drawn to movies like that. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I totally agree. I'm kind of, uh, in the same boat I, I i love movies about teachers so much so i became one um but <laughs> uh yeah but it, it's rare that you see one that that kind of goes beyond um you know the the more glamorized view of it of like you know the how do i reach these kids you know that kind of stuff right to no here's what the day in and day out is like and you know um it, it, but it, it 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 was fun to go back to that movie in particular because it had been years, and uh, and see that like oh yeah it actually does have um, some perspective still, and and has a, a real sense of uh, you know not just like look I I love Nick Nolte and Joe Beth Williams and just seeing them act is fun, but you know also that it it has something to say. And, and that's nice. I like that. I like, I like a movie that's got, you know, perspective. And I've actually this one watched does. that. Uh, it hasn't been too terribly long. I mean, when you get to my age within the last decade, isn't too terribly long mm -hmm. <laughs> as it turns out. Um, uh, but now I kind of want to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's cause you've reminded me of it, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Yeah. It's a, yeah, solid movie. Um, and I, and also a nice reminder that Judd Hirsch is a, a pretty good actor in his own right. Um, you know, not that uh, it, it it is like it, you forget it with performances like Independence Day and Independence stuff like Day, that. Independence Day, yeah. Yeah, that it's like, oh, no, no, he's like he was a good dramatic actor. Yeah. Um, all right, well let's let's wrap this up with a, a quick discussion of uh, what are we going to be, um, what are we going to be watching in the next month? And I'm just gonna we talked about it last month, but I'm going to mention it again. But like we're a week away from Evil Dead Rise coming I know. out, and that the reviews have been pretty compelling. Do you know right now at this moment there are three horror films in my theater? And when's the last time that happened? Uh, what are, that is insane. What What are the movies? So Scream 6? Scream 6 is still there, obviously. Renfield just started. Yeah. And then there is a movie that just started that I have never heard of. I never saw a trailer for. I never saw a poster for. Nothing. I Nothing. And I just, the only reason I found out about it is because I went to the theater app to see, you know, showtimes because I wanted to go see Renfield this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's called Oregon Trail. Not oh Oregon. yeah, 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 yeah. Not Oregon, but Oregon. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> and, kind of a horror western sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. And so I watched a trailer for it, and the trailer doesn't give you really anything. Like it's just it just comes across like a western, and then at the very end, there's like a bit where you can kind of see there may be maybe like a supernatural element, although I'm not 100 percent sure because it doesn't really tell you anything. Mm -hmm. But I. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think I might actually go see that just because I don't know anything about it. It's clearly from the trailer, a lower budget film, but, uh, it was put out by Paramount and I, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to try to check it out if just you, because I want to support, you know, low budget films. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If, if you see that, let me know how it is. Cause I, I haven't heard anything about it other than it's coming out. And yeah, so that's, that's the thing is, is it got dropped with zero fanfare. So obviously they don't have a lot of uh, confidence, I guess, in it. So sure. maybe it's not good, but I, I don't know. I'm, it kind of has piqued my interest. So that 
I still want to see Renfield. I'm so excited about Evil Dead Rise. And there is something else that is coming out. Like, I mean, we're just getting hit. Just like, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't go to the movies as much as these movies are coming out. And for me, who likes to support horror in theater whenever I can, that, that makes it difficult for me. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Like I told Brian, I'm like, I'm so torn. Like, oh, also, no, 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 there are four because uh, The Pope's Exorcist started this weekend, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. even though when you see the trailer, it it comes off as very like a generic exorcism movie. It is based on a real guy. And everything I've heard about it is that Russell Crowe fucking kills it. Like every single review I've seen has just been, yeah, the movies, it's not going to. It's not going to change your life, but Alex Esso is really good, and Russell Crowe kills it. Like it, that's just what everybody, every single review has said is that it's worth watching for Russell Crowe. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'll. I mean, I do want to see it. Like, do I want to go see it in theater? I don't know. But then at the same time, like, um, I like to see everything in the theater that I can. But it's just like there's so much. There, I mean, I cannot tell you the last time there were four horror films in the theater all at the same time mm -hmm. and and like reasonably budget yeah I, I i agree yeah it's that's kind of crazy uh but i like it i like it i, I, like I living love in that it world i love it but at the same time i'm like damn it i don't have that much time you know so something i'm, I'm probably gonna see go see something on tuesday because that's five dollar day at, at my theater and so i'll i'll either go see oregon trail or Pope's Exorcist on Tuesday. I think I'm going to see Renfield today. And then I don't know what I'll do with the other one. Uh, something Somebody's going to have to wait for streaming because next week I have to go see Evil Dead Rise. So Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at is, is like I would love to catch up on some of this stuff, but I got to look. I know where my heart lies, and it is it's Evil Dead Rise. It's Evil Dead it. Rise. You know. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, I, I genuinely cannot like I but like I said the the review the early reviews that I have seen have all been like this is legitimately intense and scary and gory yeah. and that is all I want out of an Evil Dead movie like that remake I am not the biggest fan of that remake but I like I I preferred it to some of the more toothless remakes of of the past few years like it it is imperfect. But it is certainly going for something. And... Well, I actually love it. I And so stylistically, this one looks very similar to that mm -hmm. one. And yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. I did watch recently. I don't know if you ever watched Sean Clark. Um, he, uh, he did Horror's Hallowed Grounds where he goes around and, and goes to filming locations of, of various horror films. Really excellent show he's and he actually had a tv show for a while but he's on um and he would oh he does all the like the on blu-ray releases for scream factory they'll he'll do a uh, horrors hallowed grounds to be on the disc you know mm. as a as a bonus and he has a youtube channel anyway i love him he's great huge horror fan um, has been in it for decades. He his his collection is just incredible, and he knows everyone, and uh, he it's just really fun. But I just watched. Uh, he went to a screening of Evil Dead Rise, and obviously they don't let you record the film, but he did uh, record the bit in the beginning where um, Bruce Campbell came out and did a Q and A. And by the way, he was really funny, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> But that was so funny because the person who was hosting this Q and A really has no idea what she's doing. <laughs> oh no! And it was it at one point she kept she'd be like, "Well, she's like, I don't want to tell you too much, but I'll tell you this." And it, like she would, and I'm not going to say it because she, you know she was saying way too much, and like people in the audience are like, stop talking about the movie. I mean, like they're there to watch the movie. That's what they're about to do. Shut your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that actually, if uh, anybody is interested in that, it was a really fun Q and a Bruce Campbell is hilarious. And um, he actually is, was very excited and supportive of this film. So I'm, 
I, he's probably an EP on it. Like, like yeah, yeah, this is not impugning the good name of Bruce Campbell, but I think he's got a piece of those Evil Dead movies. So oh, yeah. kind of anything that comes out around them, he's like, this is great. You're going to love this. And, uh, you know, he, he, I think he's the same way about like the video games and so forth. And it's like, ah, eh, this is fine, I guess. But uh, I mean, yeah, in the end, it, it is in his best interest to, uh, right. Right. And, and again, this is not to impugn the good name of, uh, of Bruce Campbell because I, I, you know, God bless him. That guy deserves all the success he gets and more. He's, he's a wonderful actor and supporter of the genre and all that stuff. Um, but you know, also let's not, <laughs> let's, let's not kid ourselves. That guy is, uh, also a bit mercenary in, in the ways that anybody who, you know, has a stake in a business would be, would so, be. Yeah. 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 Uh, it is not, that, that is not speaking ill of him. That is just saying, you know, obviously there are, there are, are very good compelling reasons for him to say that this movie is good. But I've heard from just beyond, you know, Bruce Campbell's mouth, um, a lot of the early reviews have been very positive. And, you know, hopefully that'll translate. I, I, I'm, look, I want nothing more than for a an Evil Dead movie to be awesome. Uh, yeah. So I, I have, I'll, you know, and I've seen the trailers over and over and over again at this point because I go to the movies about once a week. And um, and all of the trailers I've seen, I'm like, all right, I'm on board. This looks this looks very intense, and the mm -hmm. whole like mommies with the maggots now. I'm like, yes, please. I want more well, of this. And I love that they have kids in peril. Yeah, I mean, that's something we've we don't see in Evil Dead films. So, I was like, yeah, all that, right, well, let's see where they go with this. That that is a great point um that yeah it is it is rare in these movies that it's like oh this is you know children in harm's way um which you know that makes me happy i like i like seeing children in danger i like putting children in danger i'm so glad you're a teacher uh, <laughs> you know they're lucky to have me let's Yo, let's yeah. be real no i know, I know. Um, no but i'm the same you know me i mean kill now obviously in real life don't kill children that's bad sure but in movies have at it yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> right 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 this is all made up don't <laughs> it, you know yes i i totally agree um all right well that's gonna wrap it up that's you know we went over but you know it's always fun when we're talking about specific especially evil dead a new evil dead movie that's like ever since i heard this when it was i, I think originally it was going to be like a straight to hbo yeah max kind of thing and and now they're like no 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 this is we're do, we're doing this for realsies this is going to be a, a real movie which is the smart thing for them to do particularly right now because one uh people have been like just horror fans have been dying for this film that this is yeah. the film that you hear on everybody's can't wait to see it list and i think it would have been a huge misstep not to put it in theaters yeah, particularly if it's good, and and the again early buzz is that that it is good. Then yeah, put it in theaters, and it, you know the uh, studios seem to have learned at least recently that um, you know horror is it, it, like it it it's viable, right? <laughs> it continues to make money. So why why on earth would you not uh, throw a movie like this in a theater that's got a built-in audience like people love those evil dead movies of of many different stripes so yeah don't don't screw around put this stuff put this uh, put all these movies in a place where we can get our hands on them because uh we want it um yeah and uh, that reminded me too of last voyage of the demeter which i am yeah super excited about yeah that looks interesting i uh, the that trailer was in front of uh, in front of renfield which you know obviously makes a ton of sense um but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious about that movie too. It looked, and it, it was interesting seeing like, oh, this Dracula movie in front of another Dracula movie, and yeah. uh, the, very different, <laughs> very different in tone. And it reminded me of the movie Blood Vessel. Yes, and I was like, oh, this looks like Blood Vessel only good, and that's that's all I want is a better version because that that's such a good idea for a movie of 
you've got this confined space and and blood vessel was a travesty that that movie could have been so good and it wasn't even close to being good which was real frustrating i didn't hate it but i also didn't i it's one of those movies that i saw and i was like okay that's a thing i saw you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean well and and in fairness that's how i felt about it too but it was like th- this is such a good idea it feels like such a wasted opportunity that it's only just kind of okay you know um yeah, yeah. but yeah 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 so i'm i'm very excited about uh last voyage of the demeter so um and and it's got uh, who is it charles dance uh is in it with his in- incredible like sonorous voice mm-hmm. so he can say things like there is something on this ship uh, <laughs> and i'm like yeah there is Probably, yeah. probably a vampire. <laughs> you, probably, you, well, you probably got a Dracula on your hands. It's a Dracula. You got a. Uh, there's Dracula on this ship. Um, <laughs> that's that's what I really want. I want I want a movie called Dracula's on this ship. Dracula's on a, a boat instead of snakes on a plane. <laughs> oh, that's funny because oh, I was talking about Sean Clark, and in, in one of his episodes, he said something. He was I forget what movie it was, but he's like, you know, and then a Dracula, and I was like, yes, yeah. He- <laughs> that, nothing <laughs> makes me happier. He's my people. <laughs> yeah, I. It, it's something. Uh, nothing makes me happier, and it's so stupid, but I love it. As you well know, when somebody refers to a vampire as a Dracula, there is yes. there, it makes me so happy, inordinately so happy. happy. So uh, happy. And, and if I see it in a movie, I immediately think like, oh, the writer and or director of this movie is somebody I wish I knew. Exactly. Um, be, because we would definitely get along. Um, all right. All right. Enough uh, shenanigans. We will be back in a month to talk about more movies. Uh, and until then, uh, say goodnight, Jamie. Good night, Jamie. Ah.